Hi friends, it's Deanna here today, and today we're working on the Hourglass Bathing Suit Pattern. I'm super excited about this. It's so cute. It's like a halter style with a band here at the top. It's got this really nice hourglass uh, color blocking option, which I love. It's also got a nice rouging option, which is super cute, and it's got the solid option. On this uh, particular video, I'm going to be sewing the ruched option, but I am going to be showing you how to sew it up if you were sewing up just a solid option or um, if you were just sewing up the color block without the ruching option. So let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> All right, friends, time to get started. The first thing, when I'm cutting my fabric, before I even do anything, I wanna make sure that we measure our trunk length. Um, if you need help figuring out your trunk length, we do have a video here on our YouTube channel that shows you how to measure for trunk length. Um, because you wanna measure your side waist and figure out how long your side waist is to know how much you have to add or subtract. This pattern is drafted with an eight inch side waist. Mine is a nine inch side waist, so I have to add length or the uh, bodice is not going to fit. It's gonna to be too tight on my, on my torso. So to add length, you basically add a one to one ratio. So if I have to add one inch, if, um, if my trunk is uh, nine, which it is, I have to add one inch, which means that I just spread, cut and spread one inch. Now the difference in this pattern is the fact that it has a couple of options. We have the regular option and we have the ruched option. On the ruched option, you're going to be adding um, one to 1.5 ratio. So if I have to add an inch, I'm gonna add actually an inch and a half. So I'm gonna move my pattern an inch and a half down, which makes it like right flush with my fabric. Um, and this is how much I have to add. Now, you only have to add an inch and a half to the outer option for the ruched and whatever it goes here because on the uh, liner, the liner doesn't get ruched up. The liner stays straight. So I would only have to add one inch to the liner. So if I'm not, if I'm not ruching, I only have to add one to one ratio. If I'm ruching, I add one and a half. I hope that makes sense. Now you got to make sure that you also add it to your other pieces, your side pieces, your back piece. You have to add that to your liner. You have to add an inch. Your side pieces don't get ruched. So you only add a straight inch. Um, just the front outer is what gets ruched. So if you're going to be doing the ruched option, the stuff outer front is what gets ruched so that you add one and a half, uh, one to one and a half ratio. So you add an inch and a half or subtract. Let's say that your torso, it is seven inches instead of eight. You would overlap one and a half inches for the ruched option. For the regular option, you would overlap one inch. And then you would overlap one inch on everything else, all the other pieces. I hope that makes sense. I also, one thing that you'll notice here is that I start at a medium and I slowly grade out to a large on my bottom pieces because I fit into the large um, bottoms and medium top. So that is how I did. I printed both sizes on my layers program and I just flared out as I got to the hip area and went out so that it would be the large um, option here. So that's what you see here in the difference. So I'm going to go ahead and cut everything out. Um, just how it says, just the only thing that I'm doing different, obviously is here is the rouging. I'm going to add one, one and a half inches. And then on everything else, all the side, the back, everything, the liner, I'm just going to add one inch because I am taller than the, um, intended fit for the, uh, torso. All right, friends, it's time to get started. I've got my roost front my two backs and then my color blocking pieces front two fronts two backs and then i've got all my um band and my lining and my other stuff over there which i'll go through later so if you're not making the ruched version no worries we're going to start rouging this front up but i'm going to tell you when you would pick up with the solid version when you would pick up with the color block version so we're going to get started with this solid I mean, not solid, ruched. So what we're going to do first is we're going to mark where our dots are on our bodice because what we're going to do is we're going to gather or rouge or gather our sides to create our rouging. So I'm just going to pin here where those little dots are on both sides. And once I do that, I'm gonna go in from that dot to these this bottom dot and gather. So I'm gonna put in like, you could put in two basting stitches um, which are two long straight stitches and then you're going to end up pulling them 
to gather them. I used the longest stitch on my, on my sewing machine and I'm leaving a big tail in the beginning and the end. All right, now that I've left those long tails, I'm gonna grab my front side. This is my back. This is the side front for the color block. And I'm going to gather this side waist to fit my color blocking piece. If you don't remember how it goes, you make sure that you put it back on and and see how it goes this way. This is the top and this is the bottom. So this is gonna start here because this is what it keeps going, the leg shape. I'm gonna continue that leg shape. And this is gonna be gathered all the way so that it fits like so. And this will be my gathering right here. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna pull this tight to gather it to fit, and then I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Now, if you don't have a color blocking option, what you're going to do is you're gonna grab your back, um, and you're going to use your back to do, this is, this is the one on this side. You're gonna use your back to measure how small you need to gather this, because you're gonna gather it the same size as the back. So you'll put the back piece here, and you'll gather it to fit the back, because you're gonna sew it together. But I'm doing color blocking, so that's why I'm doing it this way. I'm pulling the thread, the bobbin thread, and when I pull that, it will help me to gather. All right, so then I'm going to flip that right on top. I'm going to pin it or clip it right here at the end, and then clip it or pin it right here at the other end as well. and then make sure that you're clipping it evenly all the way. Okay, and when we sewn that, that's what it looks like right there. That is gonna be so pretty. I love, I love a ruched detail in a bathing suit. I don't know why, it's just, I think it just looks so beautiful. All right, I'm gonna do the same on the other side. All right, now I'm gonna go with my sewing machine, my or serger, either do a zigzag stitch together or serge it together. I'm going to serge that right there to create. This will be my front. Now, if you already have a, if you have a solid version um, or a non-ruched color block, if you have a non-ruched color block, you obviously don't have to do the gathering. And so your next step would be to do the same thing I did here with my sides. If you have a non-color block, then you don't have to worry about this part. You can just uh, go skip a few more steps because we are also going to, I'm going to get my back and I'm going to do the same thing to the sides, how I would, um, how I just did the other one. So I've got my sides here and this will eventually be sewn together. Oh no, did I cut this the wrong way? No, I cut them the same way. They were supposed to be mirrored. No. All right. So how I had to fix it was I had to actually put a seam right here because I didn't have enough. So I will have a seam on the inside. It's okay, I have a liner and I don't think you can see it that bad. I mean, it's all right. It is what it is and we will be okay. So this is how it's gonna go. Um, we will sew, if you have a solid version, you just move on to the next step, which is sewing these two together. So we'll face them right sides together, which actually we can actually Actually, 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 <laughs> we can do that right now um, as well. Either one would be fine. I like to do everything kind of at the same time. So that's why I kind of do everything at the same time. But if you want to do the sides first and then come to the back or I'm doing the back and the sides at the same time. Okay, so then once it's sewn right there, you'll have this back piece and you don't have to do that first, but I just went ahead and did it. Then you have the side pieces for the color block version. And it's gonna have, you're gonna have one obviously on one side and then the other one on the other side. So I like to face them up so that I look, this is what they're gonna look like. This is the right side here, the outer side. And then I'm gonna flip it and match them the right sides together. So you can start at the bottom, match that bottom spot, match that top spot. 
and then place it, pin it, clip it evenly all the way down. So I went on a uh, sewing retreat with some friends and one of my friends, my friend Ashley, she, um, she was so funny. She got all these little ducks, like these little ducks right here. And she got like, she got them from Amazon, a ton of them. And she placed them on all of our bags without us knowing. So when I got back from our sewing um, retreat, I have a ton of these little ducks all over, like in all my bags. And she actually made this little pouch for me. And they, I just opened this pouch the other day and there was like ducks everywhere. It's so funny, I keep finding them. Anyway, so that's why the ducks are there because they just came out of my pouch. Um, I'm gonna do the same on the other side as well right here. So now I'll have my back and my front completed and then I will be placing them together and sewing them together. Now, if you're doing the solid version, you're still not doing any of these steps. You still will be skipping to the next step when I come back and I have my solid back. Um, you would be doing the middle back seam though. The back seam is will be on the solid version as well. The back seam just, it's great for that shaping so that your swimsuit will come right up to your your back and it gives you like a nice shape on your back. So that's why there's that back shaping right there. All right, swim elastic, I mean not swim elastic, swim fabric can be very, very slippery. So make sure when you're sewing, I like to see a little bit of the under fabric so that I know that it's getting clipped. Not a whole lot to make a big difference, but just enough that I can see it's a little bit there. Um, if you have a hard time with it slipping in and out, you can always put in a basting stitch. So just a straight stitch there first, may open it up, make sure you cut all of it and then come back and sew it correctly. Make sure that fabric doesn't fold up on you and end up getting caught in the wrong spots. I also like to sew with my gathers face up so I can even them out. And take your time on here. All right, look at that front. I love that ruching there, it's so beautiful. Now what we're gonna do is gonna grab our back. I'm gonna place it right sides together. Remember, this seam is here only because I didn't have enough fabric, so I had to piece it together. To do so, I just added a quarter inch on each side and did a half an inch seam allowance. And so that's what I did here. And that's why there's that seam there. You should not have that seam there, but if you have to piece fabric together, then you might. Anyway, now what we're going to do is we're gonna place our sides together and match them right sides together. And we're also going to match up our crotch seam here at the bottom. You could find your half right here and where that half is right there, that's where your back seam is gonna go, your half seam right there. And you go to one side and then the other. I'm gonna sew those together. I'm gonna put it aside and go sew it in a minute, but I'm also going to go ahead and grab my liners. And I've got all my pieces here in front of me, accessible. So, as you can tell, they're cut up because I also have to add length to my liner. Like I mentioned, I have to add an inch. So that's why it's cut up. So we're going to sew our liners. Now, if you have the solid option, you would sew the solid option just like I'm going to sew these this liner option because that's what the solid option would do. I've got my front and, um, I, this is my back seam, I'm sorry. This is my back right here. I'm gonna place them right sides together and sew them. And that was one of Bo's hair because as you all know, he likes to be everywhere I am. So his little love rays are everywhere. So we're gonna sew this back seam right here. And after we sew that back seam, we'll come back and we'll sew the front and the back, just like we're going to do the swimsuit, right sides together. And I'm just gonna piece it right sides together right now. But I know the bottom, I can't piece it yet because I gotta sew that line first. And then once I do that, then I can sew the bottom as well. But I'm just gonna piece it now. And then when I go over there to sew it, I'll just, you know, put it right on top of the line and sew it because i just like to do everything at the same time that's the only reason but you can take your time and do the, the steps separately and this is how we create our liner if you have the salt like i said if you have the solid version this is how you would put the solid version together as well 
just the sides so the back together then the sides then the crotch seam so once that's sewn i'll put this on and sew it right there as well now for our shelf bra right here we're gonna grab our back piece uh this is the front this is the i'm sorry this is the front yeah this is the back i don't know why i said that this is the front this is the back and the back piece was cut in two and since it's already put together i'm gonna go just leave it and i'm gonna sew this raw edge here to become to make it one piece you see when you open it up that will be one piece right here for the back lining once we do that we're gonna grab our front lining and open it up and you should have one big piece like so and i'm gonna place it right sides together and sew the sides right here All right, I've got my front outer finished. I think this is gonna be adorable. Look at that. I love the shape of this hourglass. I love the ruching, I'm just obsessed. I've got my lining piece finished. I'm gonna leave it inside out because that's how it's going to go in there so that we don't feel any seams on the inside. Um, so this will be what's touching your skin, the right side of the fabric. So I'm gonna put that aside a little bit because we're gonna work on a shelf bra. I've got my shelf bra right here, and you can see that the curved, that's the top right here. Um, for the elastic at the bottom, now, I cut it so that I have room to fold my elastic over, like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of elastic, the width about, um, I think it's an inch less, uh, one to two inches less than the wearer's underbust. Then I'm going to overlap it here. And zigzag stitch it together so let me go do that real real quick all right there it is so now if you have exposed elastic you will turn this right side out and you'll place your elastic right sides together you're gonna quarter your elastic well let me quarter my elastic first all right you're gonna place your elastic right sides together with your outer and sew it right sides together and then you'll flip it over so the seam will be on the inside Okay, well, I want to do it um, where it is tucked in. So I'm going to change my shelf bra and put it right uh, inside out. I got to find the front. Mark the front of my shelf bra here. And I'm going to grab my elastic and I'm going to place it on the wrong side of my shelf bra. And just going to, I'm going to sew it on matching up those quarter points because you're going to be stretching the elastic as you sew it on you can sew it with a zigzag stitch you can sew it with a uh i'm probably just going to sew with my serger to be honest so you're going to stretch it as you sew it okay and then once it's sewn i'm going to flip this once it's sewn there at the edge i'm going to flip it over then I'll go to my sew machine. I'm going to zigzag stitch it, top stitch it on. Okay, so I'm going to go do that now. All right, now it's sewn to the wrong side. Now what we're going to do is going to flip it and top stitch it. And I should probably put on um, white thread, but it's the inside of the uh, bra, so I don't really... Um, we're just going to stretch it and zigzag stitch it. And this is what my inside looks like now obviously if you would have used a different um uh, the same color you wouldn't be able to see the stitching but i don't i think the contrast looks kind of cute and you won't be able to see it anyway it's going to be on the inside all right there it is we're going to grab our liner and we're going to turn it actually right now we're going to turn it right side out so that we can fit our um bra in there we're just going to fit it in and um you can baste it together or I'm just gonna clip it right now. Right here. That top seam. All right, so now that we've got it in, we're gonna turn this wrong side out again. So our line, our, our shelf bra is right side, it's inside of there. 
right side is on the outside and then this is the right side uh, the wrong side of our liner and we're going to fit that right into our suit so the wrong sides of the suit are touching so see here's the wrong side is going to touch the wrong side of the suit and we're going to match up the sides and then you can match up this front line right here i mean the back line and then the other side you've got three layers now you've got your shelf bra your liner and then your swimsuit and then all the way around the top you're matching up all right so as you'll see you have your outer bathing suit piece you have your liner is sandwiched in there and it's the wrong sides touching and then that you can see the right side of your shelf bra uh, facing the inside because that's what you want it to look like on the inside all nice and pretty in there um, we're also going to match up here the legs see that crotch seam right here you match those up and you're gonna match up those seams now you all know I don't baste a whole lot but here at this spot I would say it's a good idea to baste them together baste all the um, liner and outers together because then you're going to be attaching the bands and you want to make sure that they're not going to shift on you because that would be really aggravating and swim can be very slippery so i would say take your time go over to your machine and put in a long straight stitch to baste these layers together before we move on to the next step i know it's a step that it's kind of like a i don't want to do that but <laughs> um it will help in the long run all right let's, let's go base those on all right now we're going to work on our bands we've got our back band and our front band and i want to mark my halves and also mark my bands so I want to know that the green clip on my half here is going to be the front and then the red clip here will be the back now I'm going to grab my mat and my iron and I'm going to give it a steam to do a memory crease now make sure when you're doing this you make sure that you take into consideration your fabric and everything so you don't end up burning it uh, with your iron. All right, now I'm gonna grab my front and back and place them right sides together and sew this raw edge here. Make sure that, yeah, okay, that's that way and this one is this way. <laughs> Make sure that they're right sides together. I'm gonna sew this, the ends, right sides together. All right, now we're gonna grab this top where we basted the bodice together. And we're going to, first of all, mark the front here. And we're going to grab our band. And when it's folded, we're gonna fold it again along that crease that we created earlier. And we're going to match up. Now remember, I put the green to the front. So that's the front right here, right sides together. And then when I go to sew it on, first of all, we're going to stretch as we sew. Make sure you catch all your layers. And you're going to leave a gap here, two to four inches, to insert your elastic. So I'm going to go ahead and stretch it as I sew and sew it all the way around. All right, now I've got my elastic. That is the measurement of my upper bust minus about one to two inches. Um, and I'm going to insert it through that gap that I left up here. Now you're gonna overlap it and zigzag stitch it together. Make sure that it's not twisted or turned at all. I'm making all sure of that before I even do it. And then also, once you're done with that, you're gonna want to, once you zigzag stitch it on, 
you're gonna wanna try on your suit and see how it, well it fits before you close that gap. So once you try it on and make sure that the elastic, the, you don't know if the elastic needs to be tightened more or not, then you can go ahead and close that gap off right there. And we'll move on to do our leg openings and straps and we'll be done. All right, so it's time to start with the elastic at the leg. I'm going to overlap my elastic and zigzag stitch them together here to create two round pieces and I'm going to be attaching them to the legs. Okay, and then for the straps, I'm making the thin straps. You will have two for halter and then four um, for if you're doing two, uh, two straps. So I'm going to do the halter. So I'm gonna grab my, my strap and you can do this with, you know, the if you have four of them. And you're gonna fold it and you're gonna sew them right sides together and create a long piece. So what you wanna do too, is you wanna sew this raw edge here and go up and over, up and over, because then we'll turn them around and these will be the ends and these will get sewn up right here and they'll get tied up at the neck. So let's go do that, we're almost done. All right, so here are our straps and we're just gonna turn them right side out. All right, to attach those, make sure you're attaching them to the front. You're gonna go to the inside and it's about, um, the recommended placement is four to five inches from the side. So I'm gonna go five inches in. I'm gonna place my first one here. And what I wanna do is for myself, I'm going to go try it on first and see exactly where I want to place my straps. Um, since I'm just doing the halter version, that means that I'll only have front straps it looks like it's really close and that might not that might be too close so i'm gonna do four and a half um and so hmm maybe just four what you want to do like i said is just put it try it on and then see exactly where you want them and then um then you'll just be top stitching it on right there at the top if you're having the halter, this is all you're doing. And if you're doing the two straps, then you'll add the two straps in the back as well. And they get tied at the top like so. So we're done with that. Um, now with the leg openings, we're gonna grab our elastic. And I'm going to start here. And I'm just gonna put this wherever you want. Well, I'm gonna sew it in starting at the bottom. And once this is sewn in, it's going to get sewn in first and then it's gonna get turned over and top stitched. So we're gonna do it on the wrong side. Whoop. And on the front part, I'm not stretching. I'm just uh, basically putting it on to the wrong side of the swimsuit leg opening all the way to like the middle section. And then the back, I'm gonna stretch out a little bit because I want it to kind of cup on my bottom, so I'm just like stretching it as I attach it. I stretch it out and like put a clip there, stretch it out a little bit, put a clip here. Um, some of them will be tighter than others depending on your preference. If you want it to be more snug, you can make your elastic a little bit tighter. Um, but there is that. And I'm gonna do the same for the other side. Like I said, on the front part, I don't stretch it. I just stretch for the back where the where my bottom's gonna be. Um, so it kind of cups it nicely. And then I'm gonna go to my sewing machine and this I'm gonna attach with a zigzag stitch on my sewing machine. Or you can serge it if you want, it's up to you. Just find that zigzag stitching it on. It's pretty simple, pretty easy. And it gives me a good handle, a good grip and just kind of, I don't know. All right, let's go sew those on and we'll be basically done. Before I turn it over, I wanna trim all the thread. And you know, you can go ahead and do the other side or you know, if you're here already and you wanna go ahead and finish it up, 
um, you can either top stitch it with a twin needle or a cover stitch or whatever you want but what you're going to do next is you're gonna grab this elastic and you're gonna fold it in towards itself like so and then you're gonna top stitch that down and I'm just gonna do it here on my sewing machine with the same um, zigzag stitch I just did top stitch that down So this is what it looks like on the outside because I did a zigzag stitch. You can do a zigzag stitch, you can do a top stitch, however you want to do it. I like the zigzag stitch on this one because it's it blends in pretty well. Um, so that's finished. Now I'm gonna do the other side. I'm gonna try it on and top stitch my strap, just doing a, a straight stitch here and then we'll be done. You also want to pull that basting stitch when you're done. That basting stitch you put in earlier, I can see it there and it's bothering me, but it's just a basting stitch that I can remove later. And you can also, if you want to trim your fabric closer to the elastic, like if you had a little bit of extra fabric hanging out on the outside of the elastic, that way when you fold it over, it looks more clean, you know, when you do that, then when you leave that fabric sit in there and then you have like extra fabric there, you can go ahead and trim that down too then fold it and top stitch it and i like to top stitch it from the wrong side here from the back some people if you want to top stitch it from the front um and sometimes i use a cover stitch but today i'm just using a zigzag stitch good old zigzag stitch there's also the triple stitch that you could use and that gives you a really good finish as well but i feel like for undergarments and swimsuits the zigzag stitch works just fine. All right, as you can see, we are finished. You can see the zigzag stitch here a little bit. Um, if you didn't want to see that, uh, like I said, you could use other kind of stitches, but I think it looks really good. I love this virgin detail right here at the waist. Kind of cinches in with this color blocking detail. And I love the neckline here. And I love that it has the different size for the bust size and the little strap here at the top i think it turned out really super cute all right friends we are done i love how this turned out i love this band up here the shaping the rouging i think it turned out adorable i love it um definitely making some more and i think it also would be super cute as a bodysuit um, with just regular fabric to wear on there some cute um a skirt or pants or leggings or whatever are are I already said a skirt. It is so cute and it's super comfy. I, I don't feel like I'm scared that it's gonna fall off, <laughs> which is something that I'm like always worried about when I'm wearing um, uh, bathing suits, especially ones that are, you know, this style. Um, but I think it looks really, really good. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please comment, like, share, subscribe. And, <laughs> oh, it just came in to say hello. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.